In this exercise, I'm going to show how to interpret a horizon using 3D auto tracking. The 3D auto tracking workflow in OpenDetect always requires preloading data. So let's go ahead and preload the four deep steered median filter seismic data. For this, go to Survey, Preload, Seismic Data. Click Load Cube button and the 4 deep steered median filter is already selected as it's a default data set. So click OK to preload it. And close to close the preloading window. Now I'm going to add a random line. I will use this random line to track a horizon. In OpenDetect you can interpret on inlines, cross lines and random lines. The advantage of interpreting on a random line is that you can rotate it in any direction. For this, hold the control key and the left mouse click to rotate. We are almost ready to start auto tracking. Now right click on the 3D horizon item in the tree, new auto and manual tracking. This pops up the horizon tracking settings window. Make sure that the section auto track is selected and for the method we'll start with the cheat trace. This method compares amplitudes against the seed reference and is recommended for most horizons. Now click on the event tab. Make sure that the event type peak is selected. It is always possible to change the event type during the interpretation. And we will leave the rest of the parameters by default for now. Click on the correlation tab. And make sure that the use correlation setting is set to yes. I'm going to set the correlation threshold to 60%. Tracking with correlation is more accurate, but it takes more time to compute. Now I'm going to check the deep steer tab and make sure that it's set to no. This option is only available if you have a deep steering license. Using deep steering ensures that the correlation window follows the seismic reflectors by steering the window along the precalculated deep. This option lowers the risk of loop skips, especially in areas with steer dips. Optionally, you can go to the Properties tab and edit the display properties. We recommend to keep the Horizon Tracking Setup window open during the entire interpretation session. Parameters can thus be adjusted at all times. But if you closed it, you can always bring it back by right-clicking on the new Horizon going to Tracking, Change Settings. I'm going to minimize this window for now. Notice that in the Horizon Picking mode the cursor is always across. You need to have the Horizon active in order to interpret. And you can make it active by clicking on it either in the 3D scene or on its name in the tree. Now we are ready to start picking. I'm going to zoom in and drop a seed on a peak event as we selected earlier. I will bring back the horizon tracking window and click start auto tracking. As you can see, it tracked a small patch. I'm going to switch on the Z values so that I see the color variation. I'm going to QC this patch now. For this, I will switch the horizon into the sections only mode. You can do this either by right clicking on it, display on that sections, or by using the V key on your keyboard.
I'm going to push random line back and forth and see if I like the quality of this patch. This looks quite good, but the patch is rather small, so I'm going to loosen the parameters a little bit. For this, I'm going to go to the correlation tab and change the compare window to minus 20 to 20 milliseconds. And click the read track all icon. I would like to QC the horizon one more time. This looks okay for now. And when you are satisfied with the patch, you can lock the horizon so that it doesn't get changed later when we track the other areas. For this, right-click on the horizon, tracking, lock. Alternatively, you can bring another menu by holding Ctrl key and right-click. This brings up the dedicated menu that contains all the tools required for 3D horizon tracking. This menu minimizes the need to use the horizon tracking setup window, for instance, when auto tracking or retracking from seats. I'm going to lock this patch now. Notice how the color changes briefly to blue, showing which areas got locked. To continue tracking, I'm going to find an empty area and drop another seed. And click on the auto tracking icon again. Now the new patch was tracked from the new seed and previously auto-tracked horizon page remains untouched. This way you can keep repeating the workflow, adding new seats, auto-tracking, QCing and locking the patches which you are satisfied with, until you have filled the entire area with the horizon patches of good confidence. Once done, you can lower the constraints in the Event and Correlation tabs to track the patches of lower quality. Keep adding new seats and auto-tracking until the tracker can no longer fill holes without making mistakes. Now, what to do when something went wrong? Of course, you always have the Undo and Redo icons uh, you can also use the Ctrl Z or Ctrl Y, or you can use the selection and deletion tools. To remove a part of a horizon, pick the selection tool, select a part of a horizon and click Delete to remove it. Make sure you are doing it on the horizon page that isn't locked. You can also use the tracking history to remove all positions, children, following the last good position, parent. And I'm going to explain how to do it on another example. To demonstrate how the tracking history works, I picked another horizon with a large search window, so that the bad positions can clearly be seen. I'm going to zoom in to one of those positions hold Ctrl and right-click on it 
and choose show parents path. This automatically brings up a 2D viewer. And the parent path is also displayed in the 3D scene. I'm going to bring back the 2D viewer and try to find the bed positions where the tracker went off. I'm going to hold control and right click on the position where I think something went wrong and click select children. Now let's switch back to the 3D scene and notice that the children of this parent path are selected. We can now hold control and right click on them and choose delete selected. To make sure that the tracker doesn't go off again in this area, add more seats and retrack. In the horizon tracking settings window, you can find another auto tracking method, which is called adjusting parent. It compares amplitudes against the last tracked position, which involves increased risk of loop skips, so it's only recommended for easy horizons. I'm going to specify the allowed differences in percents. What does it mean? This means that in the first step only 1% difference between neighbors is allowed. If the program is able to find a new sample in the neighborhood with less than 1% amplitude difference, that sample is included in the horizon and tracking moves on. Otherwise, the amplitude difference criteria of next steps are utilized. Now you can do the same steps that I showed earlier. Drop seeds, click auto check and compare the result with the previous example where we used the seed trace method. This concludes the workflow showing how to auto check 3D horizons.